We take the breath as our home base. But as with any home, you don't stay home all the time. There are times you have to go foraging around. This is a John Lee's image. There are times when thoughts come into the mind and they really have a strong hold on the mind. And simply telling yourself to stay with the breath is not going to be able to fight them off. So you have to use other techniques. Because as a meditator, you have to learn how to self-correct, to sense when you're falling off balance. When your thoughts are going off in the wrong direction, you have to have some tools to bring yourself back in the right direction and regain your balance. So if it's thoughts of anger, you have to have goodwill for yourself. Ask yourself, what is this anger doing for me? How is it helping me? And if I really want to help the world, change the world for the better, I can't do it out of anger. Because when you're angry, you don't see things clearly. Things you think might be to your benefit actually cause harm. So you've got to pull yourself out of the anger if you have goodwill for yourself. And then you look at the situation. Is it really as bad as the mind is saying it is? Sometimes it is, oftentimes it's not. In other words, learn how to self-correct. If there are thoughts of lust, there's the contemplation of the body. Take it apart into all its parts and say, okay, which is the one that I would like to sleep with tonight? The fact that you're already sleeping with it without any sense of disgust, but if you were to put it on the, the bed beside you, you wouldn't want it at all. Those little parts inside. So you ask yourself, well, what's the perception here? It, the perception is, comes from the desire to find something to lust for. We're less attracted to the object than we are to the lust itself, or to our fantasies about it. So look into those. Try to find some ways of solving those strange attachments we have. Counteract them with good medicine. This is what the guardian meditations, they have the, the Buddha, in, in order to give yourself a sense of confidence that this can be done. This is a path that was found by a good person. Goodwill to overcome anger, contemplation of the body to overcome lust, contemplation of death. The death could come at any time, and you have to ask yourself, are you ready to go? This is to overcome heedlessness and laziness. So when you find the mind tipping over in the wrong direction, what can you do to bring it back into balance? This is when you go foraging around for other techniques besides the breath. Then when you're able to calm things down in the mind, then you can come back to the breath. Get a sense of well-being, being here. And the deeper that sense of well-being goes, then the more you ask yourself, why would you want to go for those other things? Well, the mind likes variety. It wants to have the pleasure of concentration and other pleasures as well. But those other pleasures can be like planting eucalyptus trees in your garden. You want all kinds of plants, but you want eucalyptus trees too. Well, the eucalyptus trees kill everything else. So do you want your concentration to be killed? You have to make a choice. So learn how to see the drawbacks of the things that attract you and see why you're attracted. And then use some contemplations to counteract them. This is called being self-regulating, self-correcting. And it's an important part of the practice, because you can't have a teacher on your shoulder whispering in your ear all the time. You've got to notice when you're going off course, and you've got to bring yourself back on course. That's your responsibility. And it's a sign of a good meditator that you maintain a large set of skills large set of tools for precisely this purpose.